Grab your racing bibs, wargamers, because the crew of the Starship Black Raven is desperately trying to escape from the Starship Justo. Unfortunately, thanks to the Space Aids Detection Service injecting Marion and Poultry Joe with digital trackers, they said they were vaccines. Everybody knows it's a fake disease. It clearly has some kind of biochip implant. They're going to have to do something about that. Stay tuned for next episode. But until then, because of those trackers, Cobalt 15's arch nemesis, old Agent Spliff, is on the case, and he is trying to head him off, or at least steal the data, so that he can be the one that returns a Magic Space Baby to Magic Space Baby Planet. A little place called Chaalt, which we'll have to do another video to explain exactly what that means. In the meantime... They are trying to get to here, and the only open route they have is around through the topiaries and down through the storage to here. A more direct route would require hacking their way through these two doors, and they don't have time for that. We're going to start with Cranky here. And Cranky activates on nines. He's going to take three activations. He's only going to get one activation. How about that? That is going to give Lieutenant Dane a chance to take an action. Nobody has any stress at this point, so Dane on a 9 does get to take an action, and he's going to use that to pull, pull, pull over. Oh my goodness, he's going to run over to here, and then he's going to try a second action, and he's going to fail. Uh, with the one action he's got... Perez will open that door, and because we've got basically a couple of different factions, we're going to treat each of these guys as straight up. No more fancy rules, it's just a straight up battle between two humans, three little droids, and the crew of the Black Raven, unless the Black Raven can escape. Uh, then we're going to go with Spliff, and Spliff activates on, well, not a 1, and definitely not a 6 but maybe on the 18. Now with two stress markers, Cobalt could steal the initiative with an 11 or higher. Instead, he's going to try to... He's going to use this fumble to bring Lieutenant Dane out of that room. Lieutenant Dane actually is going to get to do that. He's got a plus two, but he's going to go ahead and run six inches, which is enough to take him to right here. And he doesn't earn any stress because he rolled a 20. But Spliff does get to run six inches himself. And he's going to run... Ooh, what's the straightest line he can take? Probably something like this. And that earns him one stress. So he's going to try three more actions. And this time, he can use his 20 to negate that one. To negate this five, which is a failure. And he'll get one more move. So he'll race down. He's fast too, so he can actually move eight inches. He's going to run to right here. And that buys him one more stress. Perez is going to nominate each of these three droids in turn. So we'll start with Wally, who is going to make two, hmm, four, seven, nine, no. We're going to go ahead and try to move Marion, she has no stress yet, and on a five, she's not going to get to move, but Wally here gets two actions, one to here, and remember, these guys are fast. Now, they're diminutive, so they have a minus one to their movement, but the fast means they can move that seven inches right there, and that is going to cost him two actions. Then we're going to roll for this guy. Oh, you know what, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and just leave those right there. I think, I think I'm going to need that kind of memory. Uh, so who did I, who did I nominate? This guy, and he gets, actually he gets three actions, only two of which will earn him stress. And then we'll move that last robot 
who's going to get one failure and now two successes. But Cobalt's going to try to steal the initiative, and a six ain't going to do it. So two more. I don't think it will anyway. Two, four, six, nine, sixteen minus nine, seven. No, that doesn't do it. Okay. Uh, so one move to there and one move to there. Here they come. Uh, Perez is going okay. to open this door uh, for his, and he activates, so he does that, and then this door is now open, and he's going to try to open this door as well, and on an eight, now he's got three. Let me see here. He's got plenty. He's a veteran, so normally it would be a seven, ten, eight. So he fails, and Cobalt tries to steal the initiative, and a fifteen is absolutely going to do it. So we remove all the stress markers here. Chicken Joe is going to take three actions. He activates on an eight, and he only gets one, and that's going to be two chances to get the drop on him. Uh, we'll go ahead and roll one for Perez to open this door, which he does, earning him a stress. And we'll roll one for this robot to roll forward, which he fails. So the one success we had is going to be for Poultry Joe to hustle on down the corridor and kind of take the lead over there. That earns him a stress. Next, we're going to try to move Marion twice, and she activates two times. She activates on an eight at this point. She's going to move to the wall, and then she's going to move into this room here. So she is now in the lead. By the way, the rocks do block movement, so if she moves to there, that's about as far as she can get. And that's going to cost her two stress. Then we need to bring... Oh, you know, Cobalt, we're going to bring Dane next. Dane has not been very active. We've got two failures and one success. We're going to bring Wally up with two of those failures, and both of them count. So we'll move him once to there, and we'll move him a six to... Boy, how far is that? Oh, actually, he can move seven. But I think that's about as far as we're going to be able to get for right now. Now he is diminutive, so this is full cover, no line of sight for him just yet. We did get the one action though for Lieutenant Dane, so we'll race him over here and give him a stress. That is his second stress. I would I gotta keep these guys. Stand up, Miriam. And lay off the sauce. So Marion has two. The only one that doesn't have any stress is Cobalt. And that means he can act on fives. Normally eights, no stress. And fives, he gets a total of three actions. So boy, he does not stay in the back for long, does he? So five, he's going to move to there. And then he's going to move to there. And I think he can get all the way to here. And that's going to do it for him on this activation. One, two, three. So suddenly he's in the lead. Poultry Joe, man. Let's get some wheels on there, will you? Bring him up with two actions. And both of those are going to be failures. So we'll try to move uh, him first. And he does. So he's going to race six. He's going to force him. Fast two, he can move eight total. He's going to run to here. And he's going to take up position. So they're going to have to fight their way past him. It's not going to be an easy run. That's the first. And the second one is going to be an attempt to steal the initiative. And a 19 is going to do it. So we'll clear stress. And now we're on to... Agent Spliff's turn. I'm going to start with this guy. He's going to take two actions. Activating on eights. He fails twice. That means we can bring Poultry Joe up once. Activating on a seven. 
Joe does, and he can move six inches. So he'll move to basically anywhere in here. We're going to bring him to right there, and then we'll try to bring Dane around, activating on a six. That was a six. Take my word for it. Lieutenant Dane failed. Uh, and that's it. So we'll try to bring the other guy up, and he rolls a three and an eight. Both of which, oh, the eight is a success. The three is a failure. Dane, can you take advantage? This time he does. So Dane is going to take it wide. No, he's going to stop right there. We'll bring him right there so he's got a little, little more option. And then this guy can finally move up, and he's going to zoom me on up to here. I guess probably pretty good. He gets one. Wait. Where are you? Where are you, stress markers? So he gets a stress marker for that. And then we... There's only... Didn't I move... Didn't I move? He... I feel like Spliff should have one of these. So now we'll try to move this guy up. With two actions. He's going to... Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if he should zoom around this way. Yeah, I like that idea. We're really going to put the hurt on these... These filthy hackers for coming into... Coming into poor old... Well, he can move in a straight line to about there. Poor old Cranky Perez just wanted to be left alone. And then we'll try to move him into position to take some shots. And with a 5 and a 10, that's going to be one failure. We've got three... We've only got four. We've only got four, so that's 12. Let's see if we can steal an initiative on an 8. 17 is going to do it. So we take these off. And Cobalt now has the initiative. Mm. We're going to start off by moving... Mm. We're going to... Bring... Mm. We're going to bring Poultry Joe up first. And he gets these in the gate. The 20 and the 5 will negate. He gets one action. So Joe's going to squawk and leap up to here. And that's going to be a second stress marker for him. Then we'll try to bring Dane into a slightly better position. We're going to use two actions for him. He gets both. We'll drop those down, and he can move... To here. Let me just check my line of sight. I think that's going to be a shot at minus two. No, he's got this guy's diminutive. He still doesn't have a shot. All right, so we'll stop him there. And then we want to bring. We're going to bring Cobalt into the action. Activating on fives. He gets three attacks. So he's going to move his six to there. He's going to move right up to here, and he's going to unload with two shots at point-blank range. Ambidextrous. All he needs to roll is tens on each of these. He gets two hits. With a nine and a five, the nine is going to be a headshot. So let's check for that one first. And he rolls damage. That's a 13. Minus four for the slug pistol. Comes a nine, and because it's a headshot, that is a pin, a wound, and he is knocked prone, and he has to pass a toughness number ten. So he does. The second shot is to the torso, where. Wait a minute. No, he doesn't. Cobalt only has one weapon with ammo in it. So that means he can only take the one shot. Okay, fine. So he's down, and he takes one wound and one pin, and Cobalt has his three. Okay, so who's going to go next? Now we're going to try to bring Marion in. We're going to take three actions with her. She gets two and then one failure. We're going to use that failure to bring this guy down, and a 13 will do it. He's got to move straight, but he can move seven inches. So he's going to move to here. Here, let me 
slide this back for you so you can see. So now this little bot is the only thing standing between them and victory. We'll go ahead and take a look up there at where Marion is taking her two actions to run six to just past Poultry Joe and another six to here. And that costs her two stress. Everybody's feeling really stressed out right now. Uh, so we'll bring Lieutenant Dane. We're going to try to take two actions with him. Uh, Lieutenant Dane has two stress markers. So he's going to activate on nines. And he gets a three and an eight. So that's two chances to steal the initiative. And with a 18, the defenders manage it. All right, well, at least there's no more stress on... Man, there's no stress on anybody. All right, we're going to start with him. He's going to try three actions. And he gets a 20 and a 2, which negate. And with that 11, all he can do is stand up. All right, fine. Now he is pinned, which doesn't mean anything. So he can take three more actions. And he gets a failure and two successes. In order to keep those two... And what do we got here? With just one stress, he is going to steal on a... On a 13? Have I been doing that wrong? Act? React? Yeah, he's got a total of one wound, one pin, and one stress. Adding in... Cobalt's plus three for being a... What does he have that for? Oh, because he's a hero. Okay. Uh, that means it's a toughness number 10. And an 18 will do it. Not bad there, uh, Cobalt. Uh, we at least get to remove that one little stress from that. So Cobalt is going to take the first action. And with a 15, 16, and a 13, he gets three actions. He will shoot this son of a gun with a 17. Now, remember, he's at point-blank range, so that's going to be a 7. Torso, arm, or leg. So we'll shoot him in the torso. Well, mm, Will we? No, we're going to have to shoot him in the arm. We'll see if we can put his gun arm out of position. And for damage, we roll a 16, which becomes a 12, which is uh, one pin and light damage. Weapon dropped, arm temporarily crippled. Hmm, I think I'll put a marker there. To help me remember... That we got to pick up that gun before he can do anything with his second shot. And I think, was that another pin? Yeah, another pin. Okay. A 16. We're looking for a 10. Yes, 10. Let me check my modifiers one more time. Ranged combat, we're looking for a 9, because it's point blank. And then we're, the target is nothing, nothing, nothing. The shooter is nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, good. So 9. So that's a total of 7. 7 is going to be torso, arm, or leg. Let's just go ahead and shoot him in the torso. Feeling good about that. With a damage roll of 4, Oh, it's not looking good for Spliff. That becomes a zero, but he does still have his armor. So that becomes a two, which is still out of action. Uh-oh. So good job, Spliff. He ran over and got tagged. And now we need to make a morale check for old Justo. And if he fails, it's all over. Uh, 14 is going to be a success. 
So we're going to think about this. Uh, three pin markers on cobalt. And spliff is gone. Um, I guess we can take those pin markers off of spliff, too. Let's bring Dane back up to here. Dane activates on eights. He gets three, so he's going to be able to run or to walk one. And then he's going to be able to go six to where Marion is standing. And he's going to be able to go another five to take cover right here. And that's going to be three stress on him. Then Poultry Joe needs to come up into the action as well. He gets one success. Uh, two successes and one failure. And with that one failure, I guess we'll go ahead and try to steal the initiative. And a 16 will do it. So poultry ain't going to move. Probably should have just done the one at a time there, huh? All right. Where are we at here? We'll bring... we got some robots badly out of position. So all we can do is... Let's see if we can bring him in screen. There we go. Old Dewey here. Or was that Huey? I can remember, I think that's Huey. Anywho, uh, he's going to make... Um, we're going to start with this guy. 16. He gets one action. So he's going to slide on over to... Well, right about where the die is, actually. Right there. And then we're going to take a second action with him. And a 17 will do it. So this time, he can move to... Well, anywhere in a straight line, basically you can move to right there and put pressure on Poultry Joe. Uh, I'm going to lay that down for now. That door is right here, but it's open, so I'm just going to lay it down like this. Then we're going to try to move this guy three times, and we're going to roll a 6, a 7, and a 13. So we're going to use both of these failures to try to move Poultry Joe. Poultry gets an 8 and a 10, and because he's got no stress markers and he's a veteran, he only needs a 7. So Joe takes two actions to run to there, and then he can actually pull up. He's going to pull up short right there. And that was the two. Uh, okay. Okay. So we're going to roll three times for him. And he gets two successes and one failure. Let's see if we can steal the initiative here, huh? And an 18? An 18 is going to steal initiative. Okay. So Paldry Joe has a couple. We're going to fire with Lieutenant Dane. Dane is going to take a couple of pot shots at that little guy. He's got one success and two failures. We're going to use the success to actually zip the zip this guy to safety because Perez realizes that the game is pretty much up. And with that, I think that um, he, he doesn't want to lose any more robots. He's already lost two. So we'll go ahead and do our little victory lap here. And now, wonder of wonders... The crew of the Black Raven finally knows that the Magic Space Baby is from a planet called Chalt. That's with two A's. C-H-A-A-L-T. Very excited to show you what Chalt looks like. But before we get there, we got to do something about the fact that Marion and Poultry Joe are going to be giving up the ghost every single time. Giving up the location of the Black Raven thanks to those trackers they've got injected. Some kind of weird DNA bio thing. We gotta clear that first. And then finally, at last, we're gonna be able to take a look at Chalt. I've got a special table all made up. I've been working on it, uh, not real hard, I just kind of slapped it together, but it looks fantastic. And we're gonna have to worry about the clue, crew of the Black Raven suffering from fuchsia malaise. Look that up, fuchsia malaise, because I was inspired by a role playing supplement. It's actually written for. Well, kind of, it's, it's kind of weird. It kind of straddles the line between old school D&D and uh, the new modern 5th edition. I think you can use either with it. It's a really interesting setting 
for that particular game. And like I said, I was so inspired. Made a whole tabletop. Looking forward to showing it to you after we clean up the the blood what would you call it after we clean up the tracking device that spliff managed to get inside the two of the crew we could leave them behind but cobalt 15 is a loyal captain and he would never do that to two of his loyal crew members look for that adventure coming up in a couple of days here on the joy of war gaming and here's one last group shot of Perez. We never really got a good look at him. He's over there on the left-hand side. A couple of the fallen drones. And here's one last group shot at Cranky Perez. We never really got a good look at him. He's over there on the left. The drones that fell in service and old Agent Spliff who was left bleeding out. Presumably, Perez will patch him up and send him on his way. Because something tells me we haven't seen the last of Agent Spliff. But whether we see him in the next adventure or not, you're going to have to tune in to find out. And until next time, remember guys, I'm praying for you.